Don in London, hello, it's June 17th. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My substance of addiction, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. Wanting to be with the right people, in the right place, doing the right things and having the right things. Driven mad by needing or wanting, more, more wanting to fit in until I found out what I needed to do for me on a daily basis which was stop drinking, find a way to keep in recovery and simply learn to live life a different way without depending on something, a substance, a person, a place or a thing. So a bit detached I suppose in a way but no, free to make choices and be interdependent, learn how to love people, be loved back, all those good things and learn what my feelings are because they were suppressed or exaggerated by drink suppressing what I thought was bad what people wouldn't like to see and actually exaggerating being happy maybe and often people ask me why have I got a smile on my face and the answer is it's easier to smile than it is to frown and that's true it takes what 13 muscles to smile and umpteen more to be frowning at the world but sometimes we do frown at the world and we do get angry with it and in the old days I would resort to a drink to calm my anger or suppress it and equally use drink to feel better about life so for sadness and joyfulness drink had its place and so did people I did love them without a doubt but uh, I don't know how I love myself enough or would I have become an addict so that's a debate which I could go on to for many an hour. How did I become an alcoholic? And how did I find recovery? Well, it's easier for me to explain why recovery works and what helps me. So family, friends, community, medical people kept me alive long enough to get a moment of clarity which was I cannot beat the alcohol problem on my own. And indeed it turned out that I didn't have to battle anything. I just had to live sober or have a desire to stop drinking and what helped most although I would never have thought it because I'm not a joiner of fellowships or anything I always stood on my own two feet I became part of the fellowship of AA Alcoholics Anonymous and all I had to say was I'm in and I have a desire to stop drinking and that's, that's what it is if you say you're in, you're in if you say I don't like this, you go and that is the beauty of fellowship you come and go as you please but there is a toolkit which, which is available for everyone and it works differently because we are all unique and authentic mm. and differently for everyone so depending on our life experience and what is going on if we can stop drinking we can probably cope better with reality so this is my video for this day on this year and other videos follow from other years so I'm talking about the steps in action and for me June and July is all about step 6 and 7 which is covered in the Daily Reflections book or literature of AA one thing I must say I don't represent AA I just tell you how it's helped me so everyone in, in the fellowship is unique and authentic and speaks for themselves where they choose um, of great importance obviously is the anonymity afforded in meetings and groups of AA where people find out the truth of who they are almost like the confidentiality one would expect from a priest, a doctor or whatever we do our best not to gossip about other people but we do try and help each other by sharing experience, strength and hope so anonymity is absolute sanctuary to find out who we are so for today, June 17th, some words I've written them down, makes it easier today, today I feel calm a morning meeting for me, and it will be not far from here, uh, at a church ironically, the very last place I thought I'd end up going to and the very last place my ego would take me or my belief system would take me a home project completed, another underway that's good news for me every morning I set my expectations to zero at the, at the same time good ambitions prevail 
So the first, forgive everyone and forgive everything of everyone. Love those I know. Have an open heart and let go of the past. So when I say set my expectations to zero, in the past I would have high expectations of me delivering in career or in relationships as if I were some sort of automaton, a robot. And these days I say expectations of me are zero so let's see what I can do today. And the amb ambition is to be sober at first. And then let's see what we can do. And that can be to help anyone and everyone in some way or other. And when I say love those I know, have an open heart and let go of the past. If I keep on living my old ways, or feeling the old way about what was going on, if I don't forgive me for what I did, I can't forgive anyone for what they did. It's like tit for tat. So these days I say to myself and always forgive everyone everything because even when they're doing their worst it's probably the best they can do right now and it may be saving their life and their situation or saving something which is keeping them held together and it's not for me to undo people, it's for me to be supportive. Next came esteem. Courage and faith flow from esteem. We may have grown up in fearful times, a brave face to cover up, a drink or drug, a way to behave making life seem worthwhile. And that was true of me. Drink was my reward and also my solace. Sober with time as we develop esteem, shame, secrets and guilt may, let, may be let go. So the secrets of not feeling good enough, the fear of being found out for whatever it was, not not guilty of any crime here except not knowing myself too well. I can let go of that and say I can be open today and find out more about who I am by the end of the day. So it's not identity based on history, it's my developing identity as a human being which is important to me. Courage and faith in being open, honest and willing is possible. We live our consequences. Of course we live the consequences of life what happens in real life has consequences but we need not fear them or resort back to drink to cover up or resort to drink to fit in we change our lives as we choose as unique authentic people that's what fellowship did for me and does for me going on deep down within we have a connection and inner voice which prevails the inner voice of good conscience and I'll put a question mark there or God and good conscience depending on your faith and belief in what goes on in this world and hereafter. Life may produce many contradictions and conflicts, anger and resentments. In recovery as we change to living in the now, it helps us make choices as we feel right, we think right as best we can today. So it's an ongoing situation, progress not perfect. These are how the steps work, especially six and seven. And that's what I was thinking about this morning. Step six and seven, defects and shortcomings. So step six is asking for our defects to be removed on a daily basis, as long as we ask. And that's accessing in good conscience, what am I going to do today? And do I have to fear anything? And the answer is no, unless I won't find out. Or if people won't tell me, I'm with the wrong people. And that's really hard, because some people just don't know what's going on either. But if they say, I don't know either, and it's the only response they can give you. Okay, let go of the fear. We can go with what we know. And if it's a bad situation, we need to move on as quickly as we can. And if it's a good situation, but there's fear in it because it's uncertain, we can keep going with courage, faith and confidence based on what we know so far. So these are how the steps work. Remove the defects of fear in extremis, or putting on a brave face, and ego to cover up and we get to courage, faith and confidence. Yeah, so many ask what is the difference between defects and shortcomings. Well shortcoming is not, en not enough of something. So not enough courage, faith and confidence can be a an issue. But when we're under pressure and it's a dangerous situation, if we go in with bravado, not enough fear and be careful, then we can be equally caught out. So it's got to be based on something. 
For me, defects are extremes of behaviour which are frequent, unsustainable and unhelpful. For example, fear, putting on a brave face to hide the fear, an ego which locks us into pretending we are okay when we're not okay. Similarly, when we have courage, faith and confidence to extremes, without any real foundation, we can be somewhat deluded. So, God doesn't find us a parking space, but we can say, thank God I found a par parking space. It's just a, a thank you to the universe, or whatever it is that you believe in. But the parking space was always there. And it was there for other people. Just your time and your luck. In the real world, when our feelings fit our situation, we will feel right. Enough fear when there is danger, enough bravery when we are faced with difficulty and fortitude and openness to deal with the complicated situations. And of course, courage, faith and confidence is part of learning and living each new day. Sometimes we find acceptance of life on life's terms. It can be difficult, especially when we feel pressure of life. Joyful or sad, our feet need to come back onto firm ground where life happens right now. And that's true for me. It's keeping my feet on the ground when my head may be in the clouds. And today is lottery day, for example, and I shall put two pounds on the lottery. This is the Euro millions, and there are more chances to win, but the odds are right against me. So it's a bit of fun, but I'm not going to base the rest of my life on that. Am I? Well, I would be deluded. And heading for Gamblers Anonymous, if that were the case. Similarly, I think and feel right that uh, a contribution to a charity of some form or other is right for me. Which has nothing to do with uh, AA or fellowship. It's just something I feel like doing. And it will be good to, to do it. I can do it. I can give up something else and do it and do it regularly. And I don't want any accolades for that either because I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. So don't say good one. You won't know because I won't mention it again. <coughs> so steps in action. Step six in June looking at my defects of character which is extremes of behaviour which don't fit reality right now so I don't have anxiety about what's going on now my life is calm this morning hasn't been calm all week and I've been struggling with depression somewhat and that's okay because I know about it and I know how it feels that's my intellect telling me that but my feelings have been a bit out of sorts so why? It's just part of what happens when you've got clinical depression. How does it make me feel? Well, there's a long list of things which I don't need to go into here. The good news is calm prevails. I shall go to a meeting, and I haven't been to a meeting for a little while, and one or two of my dearest friends mentioned this. Have you been to a meeting? And it's because they are concerned about my welfare and that's part of steps in action too and in fellowship because when I go to this particular meeting people talk about just for today just for today how do they feel and just for today what is possible and not possible so that's steps in action for me and it works it works on a daily basis thank God if there is one or thank God and good conscience that something is working that I'm not tipping over into dangerous territory where I'm out of reality. Reality is with me. Tomorrow is my sister's birthday, but this is also a difficult month because her partner died not so long ago, and it was all happening in the month of June and the beginning of July. And those are difficult times, and they're not too far away, so we're going to go celebrate her birthday on Sunday at home. And she's leaving that home soon too, so all change. And that's good. Anyway, enough of me for today. And what follows uh, videos from past years, and then at the end, the reading of Step 6 from the AA 12 and 12, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. Quite long actually, but it's there. And always switch off when you're ready, when you've had enough.
when you've got things to do be out there in the world living reality good or bad in the moment we can work it out that's the only place where it works life right now so it's not about waiting and it's not about setting expectations beyond reality more follows Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. I share the daily reflections, this book from AA, Alcoholics Anonymous, to offer a bit of experience, strength and hope from others. This is just one voice and there are very many voices in the fellowship of AA. What we do, we learn from others and we learn wisdom and then put it into practice. So we need the voice of many in order to form our own view of our own recovery. Unique, authentic we remain with this similarity of needing to be sober. So for today, June 17th, deep down within us, we found the great reality deep down within us. In the last analysis it is only there that he may be found, and in this case it's talking about God, or for some good conscience. Search diligently within yourself. With this attitude you cannot fail. The consciousness of your belief is sure to come to you. And it goes on to say, and before I say that, for me God is truth, love and the wisdom I learned from others. It was, our, it was out of the depths of loneliness, depression and despair that I sought help of AA. As I recovered and began to face the emptiness and ruin of my life, and believe you me, mine was ruined. I began to open myself to the possibility of the healing that re recovery offers. <coughs> excuse me, offers through the AA program. By coming to meetings, staying sober and taking the steps, I had the opportunity to listen with increasing attentiveness to the depths of my soul. Daily I waited in hope and gratitude for that sure belief and steadfast love I had longed for in my life. In this process I met my God as I understand him. For me, God is truth, love and wisdom of others. So I opened myself up to the world, experienced vulnerability, and that I was not right, and it was not all about me. And when I'm a bit off kilter, that serenity prayer helps me on a daily basis. So to God, good conscience, as you understand, it's as you understand. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today. John in London, hello, it's June 17th, 2009. Time is uh, half past seven in the morning and my video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. Uh, my substance, alcohol, it could have been drugs, it could have been rock and roll, I don't know what it could have been, but it was alcohol. And my behaviour, trying to be the best I could, in fact trying to s strive for perfection, when in fact it would have been better to look for progress and not perfection at all. If we're striving towards a goal, which is too far ahead, we will always be disappointed and we will never feel fulfilled. And what have I learned over the last few years? Simply to keep it in the day. Live in the day, be in the day. Experience today. And it may seem a bit of an ordinary statement to a lot of people, but how often do we go back to our history, get stuck in the what if, and how often do we look forwards to maybe retirement or endings? And the actual answer is, if we are on the journey and experiencing the journey fully, we can have great joy and great sadness along the way, and we learn wisdom. So for me, uh, one day at a time is the only way to approach my recovery. And what helps me is family, community, society, uh, a good conscience hopefully most of the time, and the fellowship of AA, AA Alcoholics Anonymous. and. Uh, I can't speak for it. It's full of unique, authentic people who can speak for themselves. And I wouldn't want to be a representative of it because it doesn't need any. It's simply a fellowship of people who are trying to stay sober a day at a time. And I share my experience, strength and hope, what's going on with me. 
to, well I guess as an example and because it helps me keep in the day so when I go to AA meetings there is a preamble set uh, the starting point of every meeting if you like of which there are 720 in London I have been informed so AA this is the preamble shared at every meeting for old timers and newcomers alike it goes like this Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any, de any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. It does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. And um, <clears throat> being on the, I'm on a course for, uh, I suppose, to be educated about type 1 diabetes, which I've had for several years. And it's profoundly, uh, well, it's profoundly impacting on me. The gift of this course is I'm able to better understand my diet, my exercise, and my insulin requirements on a daily basis and it has a formula and a way of working and it pleases me because it's giving me back choices in what I can do to keep well similar to AA and the fellowship so in the fellowship I have 12 steps of action as an individual I can take and if I'm open, honest and willing to have a go I can make some progress on a daily basis and I don't know why I was chosen to go on this particular one week uh, program or course on how to deal with diabetes because it's a, a rare occurrence you know it's one of the best courses I've ever attended and I'm only on day three well about to start day three so the gift for me is for whatever reason providence nature whatever the intervention was this could save my life on a daily basis too so the fellowship I lean on it that's a it gives me wisdom experience strength and hope and a bit of courage faith and confidence to keep on going even when life is really tough and uh, I believe you me this course is tough simply because I'm absorbing so much information and uh, I'm glad I can and that's all down to recovery so for me on these videos <coughs> I share daily reflections which is one page a day and 12 months 12 steps of that action in the AA program so June is about uh, defects of character and having them removed and what I've learned more than anything is with a good conscience we can work towards the good of life rather than worry about the worst of life and I guess where we can get to is be stuck in the worst of life and not be able to do anything about it so I feel like I'm being empowered and my choices are being improved this week in so many different ways and I, I wonder how to share that with uh, other people who have type 1 diabetes I don't know yet Anyway, for June 17th in the Daily Reflections it says this and uh, don't be scared off by any sort of spiritual connection. We all have our way of finding spiritual and I found it in the moment of now. Not next week or not in the past. I can't say I was ever a guru or anything. I'm just an ordinary person. So deep down within us, we found the great reality de deep down within us. In the last analysis it is only there that he may be found. Search diligently within yourself with this attitude you cannot fail the consciousness of your belief is sure to come to you and that great reality for me is with good conscience I, I probably find myself and good conscience and a connection to the rest of humanity it goes on to say it was out of the depths of loneliness depression and despair that I sought the help of AA as I recovered and began to face the emptiness and ruin of my life I began to open myself to the possibility of healing that recovery offers through the AA program by coming to meetings, staying sober and, and taking the steps, I have the opportunity to, to listen with increasing attentiveness to the depths of my soul. Daily I waited in hope and gratitude for that sure belief and steadfast love I had longed for in my life. In this process, I met my God as I understand Him. And for me, <coughs> and I know there are six and a half plus billion people on this planet, everybody has an understanding of God. As, as they see it whether there is one there isn't one so whether we're an agnostic or an atheist or a God believer uh, we have some opinion which is worthwhile exploring it's in the deep of us where our, our good conscience probably dwells and as Gandhi said you know if God is love 
God is truth and God works through people to the good of good conscience then we're on to a winner we have a, a good outlook rather than defective thinking the world is doing me down I've, I've got to put a brave face on I'm fearful and my ego is superficially keeping me protected from the world so I guess what I'm saying is we need to let the world in so we can enjoy it, absorb it, be sad or are happy about it and in doing that we open up the possibilities rather than trying to will ourselves to be well or will ourselves to the next goal and we only get to know if something is appropriate for us by exploring the possibilities and we can get so narrow it's so easy to go narrow in our living go excluded or become excluded, isolated and back in a problem so the whole of the fellowship is about from problem to solution and the gift of this program of type 1 diabetes control is making me able to understand what injections I need to do and when how to correct a problem whether it's too too high a blood sugar or too low blood sugar now the reason I can do this and I've actually got type 1 diabetes is I've been long enough on the planet to get it so I was sober in, uh, in my time uh, and the opportunity to get type 1 diabetes was there best guess is not lifestyle it was a virus and uh, in a way I'm relieved that it wasn't me who caused it but uh, being alive long enough is just as good as anything so and as Bill sees it this one there are words of wisdom on every page and if we're stuck in a rut or we can't see a way out a bit of a bit of meditation and reflection and it could be called prayer as well but it's meditation basically about what is to the good of life so on page 129 it says the way of strength we need not apologize to anyone for depending upon the creator that's nature and providence for me we have good reason to disbelieve those who think spiritually who think spiritually is the way of weakness for us it is the way of strength and it's about understanding what spirituality is and for me it's very simply the truth of now See, seeing the truth as best we can without denial and a very good theologian who uh, got to the top of his particular hierarchy said when asked what is spiritual he simply replied it was the ability to cope and you know that's so good it goes on to say the verdict of the ages is that men of faith seldom lack courage they trust their God good conscience most likely so we never apologize for our belief in him instead we try to let him demonstrate through us what he can do and the gift of that is the big picture being a part of included and here we are that's me for now and uh, the serenity prayer to God good conscience or whatever your higher power is grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change on a daily basis the courage to change the things I can on a daily basis and the wisdom to know the difference is just for today Don in London good morning and it's June 17 2008 and the time is 20 past 8, my word, a bit later than I thought. I've been up since 6 and uh, pottering around and getting my head together. I think that's what we, what we all do in the morning. And, you know, with the, without the alcohol in me like it used to be, getting up is very easy and the sort of happy wakefulness, if you like, where we feel heavy in the head because we've done lots of things the day before and uh, life is moving along reasonably well. In fact, it's going along very well for me and in a new relationship and trying to make sense of what it's like what's the difference between then and now back then for example where I was a drinker and not that sober on a daily basis where drink was my, fa my favourite friend I cannot imagine the difference until now and uh, you know I think I felt like I lived a good life and it was full of excitement and uh, lots of girlfriends, lots of work, very challenging work and I kept on going, I just kept on going day in, day out, week in, week out and holidays for me I remember in the past were more, more about isolation and just being with myself because life was just so busy and the difference these days, you know obviously uh, having gone through a transformation from being a, an alcoholic in active addiction to being a recovering alcoholic where I don't drink on a daily basis some years along year five in fact it's quite nice to say that but in AA terms I'm very young 
many people have many years ex experience of being sober, more, more so than me. And I realized that uh, the transformation for me had to be, it was really do or die. And I say that because I was dying at the end of my drinking and I had no way of stopping. I didn't understand where I was and I remember waking up one day, no clue what time of day it was, but it was just after dawn on a very cold January morning. And I opened the curtains and looked out and it was bright sun sunlight. And I thought, you know, what's going on? What can I do? And I realized I could not stop drinking on my own for the first time a long time back, I realized I could not stop drinking on my own and I needed help. So what did I do? I rang up my, my medical person and said, I can't do this on my own. And they said, well, first thing, don't give yourself a seizure by trying to stop. Come see me first and see what we can do. And then the journey started, really. I went to see them and they said, I feel that you need to go into a detox room for three weeks and see what happens when you're there. And uh, part of me said, yes, thank you. The other part, 99% of me still said no. 99% of me said, no, I want my willpower back so I should try and stop doing this for my, by myself and not be bothered with other people interfering in my life. And somehow, I rang up my sister, I rang up my mum and said, listen, they have me a detox unit now and uh, I don't know what to do and they, they just said well why not try it and see because they knew I couldn't stop on my own and it was me and my stubbornness and defiance which was keeping me out drinking more than ever to the point where nothing else would do so I said yes and uh, 72 hours later on a Monday I went into a detox and I spent three days being detoxed off alcohol before I could join the general population of the detox units and there were only about 12 or 14 people there and I thought to myself you know there's 12 or 14 people here being detoxed how many are out there still active in their addiction and I only have to look at the streets of London today to know and the faces of people to know what they use to get over life and the difference for me is I'm not trying to get over life anymore I'm just trying to make life work one day at a time so that detox unit and you know in the second week they said have you ever thought about rehab and uh, by that stage I was penniless I had no money and uh, basically my lease was up on the flat I was going to be homeless and I thought well I better try anything that's going and uh, I thought you know people were talking in the detox unit about going to interesting places like in the countryside around Bristol or going to America or going to deep into a detox or rehab unit there and uh, the only one that was available to me at the time was in Lambeth, which is South London, in the middle of Kennington. And uh, I went there for an interview, and by the time I got back to the detox unit, wondering if I'd passed the interview, how ironic that I thought that I would be rejected because I wasn't, wasn't good enough as an alcoholic. And the answer was, I was at rock bottom, I thought and I had nowhere to turn to, which were the absolute qualifications for going to rehab. And I just heard that Amy Winehouse on the news uh, passed out last night doing some admin, which is all right. And God knows when she'll get to rehab, if ever, without killing herself. So <clears throat> I went to Lambeth for my rehab, and it was a very unpleasant experience, but I'll talk about that another time. It's uh, nearly six minutes into this video. Daily Reflections for today from this book, written by AA488 people. June 17th, Deep Down Within Us. We found the great reality deep down within us. In the last analysis, it is only there that he may be found. Search diligently within yourself. With this attitude, you can't fail. The consciousness of your belief is sure to come to you. It comes from Alcoholics Anonymous Big Book, page 55. It was out of the depths of loneliness, depression and despair that I sought help of AA. As I recovered and began to face the emptiness and ruin of my life, I began to open myself to the possibility of healing that, reco of healing that recovery offers through the AA program. By coming to meetings, staying sober and taking the steps, I had the opportunity to listen with increasing attentiveness to the depths of my soul. 
Daily I waited in hope and gratitude for that sure belief and steadfast love I had longed for in my life. In this process I met, I met my God as I understand him. And uh, you know, for, for most people, uh, it's not a spiritual awakening which is a, a great bolt of thunder and lightning from the sky. It's, it's coming to understand through our good conscience what we may and may not do. And the serenity, serenity prayer sort of summarizes, summarizes it all. Where it says, God grant me the serenity to accept things I cannot change. I cannot change. I cannot change. And courage to change the things I can. Courage to change the things I can. And wisdom to know the difference. So, you know, the wisdom comes from good conscience in the end. And also an absolute application to accepting change in our lives. Because uh, if we don't change our attitude and behavior, there is an absolute certainty that we could go back, go back drinking and then rely on willpower once again to try and get it out of the quagmire. And willpower will always fail us because it's exerting our will over ourselves. Will it always fail us? Well, I think it will. That's my feeling about it too. So what do we do? We have to find some sort of salvation which is going to change our attitudes and belief, belief system on a daily basis. And of course, AA is not asking you to do anything but change your attitude and your beliefs about how to live life. And the, uh, the God question will always be there for people. It's there for a good reason. God, good conscience, to the good, is what we're all about. And trying to find life peaceful and happy and find some harmony. So why is it so hard? Because addiction is hard to break. And uh, it took me forever. Coming to, as Bill sees it, the ma the, this matter of honesty. Only God can fully know what absolute honesty is. Therefore, each of us has to conceive what this great ideal may be, to the best of our ability. Fallible as we are, and will, and will be in this life, it would be presumption to suppose that we could ever really achieve absolute honesty. The best we can do is strive for a better quality of honesty. Sometimes we need to place the other head of indiscriminate factual honesty. We cannot, under the guise of perfect honesty, cruelly and unnecessarily hurt others. Always one must ask, what is the best and most loving thing, to, loving thing I can do? And often that is just to be ourselves, to recognize what we've done and make amends when we can, but not harm other people. And coming to uh, 24 hours a day, we in AA have the privilege of living two lives in one lifetime, one life of drunkenness, failure and defeat, then through the AA, through AA, another life of sobriety, peace, peace of mind and usefulness. We who have recovered our sobriety are modern miracles, and we're living on borrowed time. Some of us might have been dead long ago, but we have been given another chance to live. Do I owe a debt of rescue to AA that I can never repay as long as I live? Well, it's the living amends, isn't it? So I reckon on a daily basis we do pay our debt, but, uh, you know, it's a rapacious creditor, that drinking thing. Anyway, my time is up. Don in London, hello. My video is all about recovery from addiction to either substance or behaviour. My addictive substance, alcohol, my behaviour equally addictive around people, places and things. So these days, sober one day at a time. And that's what seems to work. Live in the day, live in the moment. Find my spiritual connection to living in the, in the moment of now. Spiritual life is real life. Everything is spiritual. So all those 35 years of drinking were spiritual and what follows on one day at a time is also spiritual. I suppose really the question is for anyone, what quality of spiritual do we enjoy best? And only a person can make up their own mind what is best for them. So I share about what helped me into recovery and to be sober one day at a time with the help and aid of fellowship, that fellowship is AA. And today I just want to read from this book, 12 Steps and 12 Traditions, which is the backbone I guess of much of what the fellowship is about. 12 Steps so we can live well, open, honest and willing. And the 12 Traditions in Fellowship, Unity, Service and Recovery. Sounds like the dog downstairs is not having a good time. So what is AA? I just share off the preamble, which is on this little card. 
which explains to anyone what the fellowship is there to do to include people around being sober one day at a time and living a spiritual life knowing what our feelings are and not drinking so what is AA? Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of men and women who share their experience, strength and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism the only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking there are no dues or fees for AA membership we are self-supporting through our own contributions. AA is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organisation or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and help other alcoholics to achieve sobriety. So it's all about being included. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking and what you make of your life with the help of fellowship and the 12 steps and the 12 traditions and the big book of AA and how you come to live life is as it works for you as an individual because we are all unique and authentic on our life path as we are so we try not to tell each other what to do but there are some principles involved and the principles in the 12 steps and 12 tra traditions help us to find a sober life and uh, June for me is all about step six so I share the step and also a commentary about how it works for me and step six it says here we were ready or rather were entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character so what are defects and what are assets or what are our liabilities and what are our assets it probably boils down to the in the biblical sense the seven deadly seven deadly sins and also the seven virtues the opposite and if you look on the internet you'll find many versions and here's just a version which I picked up quite quickly right so pride is excessive belief in one's own abilities that interferes with the individual's recognition of the grace of God it has been called the sin from which all others arise pride is also known as vanity so pride is the first deadly sin or defect envy is the desire for others traits status abilities or situation gluttony the third one is an inordinate desire to consume more than one than more than that which one requires lust is an inordinate craving for the pleasures of the body anger is manifested in the individual who spurns love and opts instead for fury it is also known as wrath, wrath or wrath sloth is the avoidance of physical or spiritual work and the opposite if you like the seven contrary virtues humility kindness abstinence chastity patience liberality diligence and the country virtues were derived from the battle for uh, the the poem an epic poem written by Prudentius circa 410 AD an epic poem written practicing these virtues is alleged to protect one against temptation toward the seven deadly sins humility against pride kindness against envy abstinence against gluttony chastity against lust patience against anger liberality against greed and diligence against sloth so very black and white you're either one or the other but in real life what are we? we're all of those things at different times in our lives and although the seven deadly sins and the seven virtues may sound quite old fashioned we all have some sort of traits around those issues and the 12 steps of the fellowship try to address this in, in the way I understand it in step 6 and step 7 so step 6 is all about my defects of character and step 7 is all about my shortcomings so my defects of character are the sins and my shortcomings are not enough of the virtues short on virtue but in there somewhere is modern life and life as it is today and the changing values of society but around that is 
a personal code. So these 12 steps, principles, these 12 steps are about developing our own personal code of living. And how we do that is entirely up to us. No one's going to stop us doing it another way. And if they were trying to stop us, our sins or deadly sins of pride would get in the way. We get stubborn and defiant often, or I did. So, step six in the fellowship program reads as this, with a bit of commentary from me. And don't forget, this is just a personal understanding. It's your understanding in the end which counts. And where do you get your personal understanding? From life. And also listening to the many voices in society, and probably in the fellowship of AA, if you stick around long enough. So, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character. This is the step that separates the men from the boys, or the women from the girls. So de declares a well-loved clergyman who happens to be one of AA's greatest friends. He goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, yes, he goes on to explain that any person capable of enough willingness and honesty to try repeatedly, step six, on all his, his faults, without any reservations whatever, has indeed come a long way spiritually and is therefore entitled to be called a man who is sincerely trying to grow in the image and likeness of his own creator. And again, don't get hung up on creator. It's the God of your understanding, or a power greater than you, which counts in this. The common good often is used or utilised. Of course, the often disputed question of whether God can and will under certain, certain conditions Remove defects of character will be answered with a prompt affirmative by almost any AA member. To him, this proposition will be no theory at all. It will be just about the largest fact in his life. He will usually offer his proof in a statement like this. Sure, I was beaten, absolutely licked. My own willpower just wouldn't work on alcohol. Change of scene, the best efforts of family, friends, doctors and clergymen got no place with my alcoholism. I simply couldn't stop drinking, and no human being could seem to do the job for me. But when I became willing to clean house, that's step four, and then asked a, a higher power, God as I understand him, to give me release, my obsessions to drink vanished. He was lifted right out of me. Well, it didn't quite work that way, because of a stubborn son of a gun and I thought I knew better for a long time. But when I got to fellowship, I found there were a lot of people who had given up on pride and said self-will will run riot and willpower will fail. And it was right. So I listened to the many voices. If God works through people, the wisdom came quick and easy for me. So I stuck around for quite a while, shivering with, with fear another one of my defects, until I could keep on listening to what was working for other people, and then I started to learn. In AA meetings all over the world, statements just like this are heard daily. It is plain for everybody to see that each sober AA member has been granted a release from this very obstinate and potentially fatal obsession. So in a very complete and literal way, all AAs have become entirely ready to have God remove the mania for alcohol from their lives, and God has pr proceeded to do exactly that. And I would add to that, as long as I keep on asking for help on a daily basis, and listening and learning from others how to live life beyond, beyond just stopping drinking, then my defects of character seem to diminish. Personality traits don't go away completely, they just don't. But if we ask on a daily basis, at least we have a, a good chance that we will operate more to our virtues than our defects. When men and women pour so much alcohol into themselves that they destroy their lives, they commit a most unnatural act. Defying their instinctive desire for self-preservation, they seem bent upon self-destruction. They work against their, best, their own deepest instinct. As they are humbled by the terrific beating administered by alcohol, the grace of God can enter them and expel their obsession. And uh, 
I guess the grace of God for me is keeping on learning and as it says humility kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience liber liberality and diligence so working on sober rather than working on the next drink Here, their powerful instinct to live can cooperate fully with their creator's desires to give them new life, for nature and God alike abhor suicide. But most of our other difficulties don't fall under such a category at all. Every normal person wants, for example, to eat, to repro reproduce, to be somebody in society, in the society of his fellows, and he wishes to be reasonably safe and secure as he tries to attain these things indeed God made him that way he did not design man to destroy himself by alcohol but he did give him give man instincts to help him stay alive it is nowhere evidence evident at least in this life that our creator expects us to fully eliminate our instinctive drives indeed that would be foolish to think that so far as we know it is nowhere on record that God has completely removed from any human being all his natural drives indeed that would be unnatural since most of us are born with an abundance of natural desires it isn't strange that we often let these far exceed their intended purpose and that's to do with our thinking and and our vices I guess when they drive us blindly or we willfully demand that they supply us with more satisfactions or pleasures than are possible or due to us that is the point at which we depart from the degree of perfection that God wishes for us here on earth or as nature intended that is the measure of our character defects or if you wish our sins if we ask God will certainly forgive all our derelictions but in no case does he render us as white as snow and keep us that way without our co cooperation that is something we are supposed to be willing to work towards ourselves. He asks only that we try as best we know how to make progress in the building of character. So indeed it is about building of character. And if we think about our youth, where all our instincts and drives and desires were out of control as we came into adulthood, and then we find that we had to live in a society where we had to live to the norms, and of course drink is not one of them, to excess and then addiction. But of course every other behaviour can be in that addiction too, as many have found. So step six, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, is AA's way of stating the best possible attitude one can take in order to make a beginning on this lifetime job. In other words, to find balance in our natural drives and living, so that we can be included in society. This does not mean that we expect all of our char yes, character defects to be lifted out of us as the drive to drink was. A few of them may be, but with most of them we shall have to be content with patient improvement. And that's the game, progress not perfect. Because if we try to be perfect from day one, we would fail. We'd, we would be back on pride and self-will. The key words entirely ready underline the fact that we want to aim at the very best we know or can learn. How many of us have this degree of readiness? In an absolute sense, practically nobody has it. The best we can do, with all honesty that, can we, that we can summon, is to try to have it. Even then, the best of us will discover to our dismay that there is always a sticking point, a point at which we say, no, I can't give this up yet. And we shall often tread on even more dangerous ground when we cry, this I will never give up. Such is the power of our instincts to overreach themselves. No matter how far we have progressed, desires will always be found which oppose the grace of God, or, as some say, nature and providence, as we've got to where we are in our nature, and providence, that is, as the world is today. Some who feel they have done but well may dispute this, so let's try to think about it a little further. Practically everybody wishes to be rid of his most glaring and destructive handicaps. No one wants to be so proud that he is scorned as a braggart, nor so greedy that he is labelled a thief. No one wants to be angry enough to murder, lustful enough to rape, gluttonous enough to ruin his health. No one wants to be agonised by the chronic pain of envy, or to be paralysed by sloth. 
Of course, most human beings don't suffer these defects at, defects at these rock bottom levels. We who have escaped these extremes are apt to congratulate ourselves, yet can we? After all, hasn't it been self-interest, pure and simple, that has enabled us, most of us to escape? Not much spiritual effort is involved in avoiding excesses which will bring us punishment anyway. But when we face up to the less violent aspects of these very same defects, then where do we stand? And this is where it's about you and your, you and your understanding of life. However it turns out to be. What we must recognize now is that we exult in some of our defects. We really love them. Who, for example, doesn't like to feel just a little superior to the next fellow, or even quite a lot superior? Isn't it true that we like to let greed masquerade as ambition? To think of liking lust seems impossible. But how many men and women speak love with their lips and believe what they say, so that they can hide lust in a dark corner of their minds? And even while staying within conventional bounds, many people have to admit that their imaginary sex excursions are apt to be all dressed up as dreams of romance. Indeed, we can talk ourselves into anything. I know this. I've done it. Self-righteous anger also can be very enjoyable. In a perverse way, we can actually take satisfaction from the fact that many people annoy us, for it brings a comfortable feeling of superiority. Gossip barbed with our anger, and I'm right, I'm smiling there, because it's very easy to become self-righteous in recovery. I mean, the simple answer is, the more self-righteous we are, the more we are dogmatic, the more we are stubborn and defiant about something we believe there is one path, and it happens to be mine. And what I've learned in recovery, my path, if I stick with it defiantly and stubbornly, I'll start to stumble and fall down pretty darn quickly because I need the input and in inclusion of everyone in my life. Gossip barred with our anger, a polite form of murder by character assassination, has its satisfactions for us too. Here we are not trying to help those we criticise, we are trying to proclaim our own righteousness. and. Uh, <coughs> I know this from things which have happened today. Self-righteousness doesn't do me or anybody else any good. But if you point it out to another person that they're being self-righteous, am I not also being self-righteous? Because I'm developing the argument. So sometimes uh, in the fellowship we say desist of pen and tongue because there is nothing to add and nothing to be gained by it. Even though we like to do it, and to an extent I can do it too, even now. And then I think to myself, I must laugh at myself and stop it, because I don't know what is right for you. And if I don't know what's right for you, how do I know what's right for me? Which is why I always say I need to keep on learning. When gluttony is less than ruinous, we have a milder word for that too. We call it taking our comfort. We live in a world riddled with envy, to a greater or lesser degree. Everybody is infected with it. From this defect we must surely get a warped yet definite satisfaction, else why would we consume such great amounts of time wishing for what we have not, rather than working for it, or angrily looking for attributes we shall never have, instead of adjusting to the fact and accepting it? And how often we work hard with no better motive than to be secure and slothful later on. Only we call, it, only we call that retiring. Consider too our talents for pr procrastination, which is really slow in five syllables. Nearly anyone can commit a good list of, the, of such defects as these, and few of us would, be se would seriously think of giving them up, at least until they cause us excessive misery. And without a doubt, if we go hell for leather in one direction, thinking we're right, and we wonder why nobody's following us, we do get somewhat alienated and, and messed up. But if we don't stop giving up those ideas that we're always right, or that my way or the highway is the right way, then we are alone again and isolated. And we may not drink, but we're certainly not as sober as we could be. Some people, of course, may conclude that they are indeed ready to have all such defects taken from them, 
But even these people, if they construct a list of still milder defects, will be obliged to admit that they prefer to hang on to some of them. Therefore it seems plain that few of us can quickly or easily become ready to aim at spiritual and moral perfection. We want to settle for only as much perfection as, it will, as will get us by in life, according of course to our various and sundry ideas of what will get us by. So the difference between the boys and the men is the difference between striving for a self-determined objective and for the per perfect objective which is God, of God. Yeah, so we progress and are not perfect. We realise some of our potential, but our defects of character will get in the way if they remain out of balance and we hang on to them. Many, many will ask at once ask, how can we accept the entire implication of step six? Why? That is perfection. This sounds like a hard question, but practically speaking, it isn't. Only step one, where we made the 100% admission, we were powerless over alcohol, can be practiced with absolute perfection. The remaining 11 steps state perfect ideals. So, perfect ideals. So, strict adherence to the steps is about perfect ideals but you know strict adherence on a daily basis life is happening around us and we're going to be pushed and pulled in all sorts of ways so defects as well as virtues will be around there are goals towards which we look and the measuring sticks by which we estimate our progress seen in this light step six is still difficult but not at all impossible the only urgent thing is that we make a beginning and keep trying and that's it. We make a beginning and keep trying. So contingent on the day we ask for help and refocus ourselves around the virtues humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence we are on a better wicket, if you like, if you're a cricketer. If we would gain any real advantage in the use of this step on problems other than alcohol we shall need to make a brand new venture into open-mindedness. We shall need to raise our eyes towards perfection and be ready to walk in that direction. It will seldom matter how haltingly we walk. The only question will be, are we ready? So, contingent on the day we ask, are we ready to let go righteousness and every other excessive, excessive outlook or personality trait? are we ready and the only answer is yes really or if, you're, if we are stubborn and, and defiant and angry the answer may be no so we keep on trying looking again at those defects we are still unwilling to give up we ought to erase the hard and fast lines that we have drawn perhaps we shall be obliged in some cases still to say this I cannot give up yet but we should not say to ourselves that I will never give up Let's dispose of what happen, appears to be a hazardous open end we have left. It is suggested that we ought to become entirely willing to aim towards perfection. We know that some delay, however, might be pardoned. That word in the mind of a rationalising alcoholic could, con could certainly be given a long-term meaning. He could say, how very easy. Sure, I'll head towards perfection, but I'm certainly not going to hurry. Maybe I can postpone dealing with some of my problems indefinitely. Of course, this won't do. Such a bluffing of oneself will have to go the way of many another pleasant rationalisation. At the very least, we shall have to come to grips with some of our worst character defects and take action towards their removal as quickly as possible. Or well, complete understanding that defects of character can come up in any moment of the day if we are provoked, or we provoke others. The moment we say no never, our minds close against the grace of God, or common sense. After all, what else would God's word be beyond common sense and wisdom for the common man? We're not talking rocket science here, we're talking common sense. Delay is dangerous and rebellion may be fatal. This is the exact point at which we abandon limited objective and move towards God's will for us as nature intended nature and providence all these wonderful words I like because 
you know, spiritual is now. Spiritual is a moment. It's not tomorrow and it's not yesterday. Although every experience we've had brings us to this spiritual moment of now. And either we accept life on life's terms, acceptance is the key always, or we get into trouble again. And it's being defiant or angry against our situation often, that life isn't giving us what we think we deserve. So just a reminder, the contrary virtues were derived as follows. Yeah. Humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberality against greed, and diligence against sloth. And step six, the seven deadly sins or removal of them, is subject to asking on a daily basis, how am I going to live today? How do I want to behave? How do I want to be open, honest and willing to change my attitude and behaviour to fit my circumstances? And do my feelings fit my life right now? If we've been good in our step four life story and expressed it and shared it with another human being and to our creator as we choose, then step six defects fall out of that life story quite easily. And also our shortcomings, the virtues, which is all about step seven. I don't know that we can take six and seven in isolation. I can have a step six day full of defects of character if I'm stubborn and defiant and go back to my old behaviour. Or I can have a better day with a bit of courage, faith, confidence around humility, kindness, abstinence, chastity, patience, liberality and diligence. And I'm a slow learner and often have been a poor student in the past. I was criticised deeply by someone when they, I said I was a poor student in the past or I could be a poor student and it was pounced upon as a defect. It's a defect to keep on point pointing it out. My defect would be not to say it, if you get my drift. So these are my views and understandings of step, step six and seven. So how does it work for me on a daily basis? Well, in the morning I say, how am I feeling, why, and what can I do? If I feel okay, given my current situation, my feelings fit my, my experience right now, then life is understandable and comprehensible. I can, I can get on with it. But if my feelings don't fit my current reality, my feelings are over the top in some way, in a particular direction of those defects or sins, or well my virtues are without foundation, courage, faith and confidence, over elated. I need to to ask myself, why am I feeling this way? And that's not to actually analyse to death. How am I feeling, why and what can I do is a very great starting point. I don't know how I feel right now. Why? Because I haven't given it a second thought. What can I do? Consider my options today. Or if I wake up angry, fearful, resentful, or just feeling like I can't cope or I don't know what to do, then I need a bit more courage, faith and confidence and I often get that by ringing somebody up or making contact with another human being not necessarily in fellowship but somebody who I love and loves me back and that's unconditional love it's not dependent on anything else other than love to and from people who care something my father said he wished he had cherished my mother more and being less superficial and indifferent. And I think that sums it up. Cherish always and less superficial and less indifferent. And the only way I can be that way is to understand my own life and how I relate to other people. So the steps work for me daily because in mind and in meditation it's about what is the next right thing for everyone, inclusively, and not just me. So I'm merely a player, and I'm not the chief critic anymore, I hope. Although I will be chief critic in my own life, often, and sometimes flail at others and be critical, but it does me no good, and it does them no good. 
Step 6, June. Step 7, July. I can have a bit of both in each day. I can have a, a fairly bad start or a fairly good start. Enough courage, faith and confidence to keep on going. Or I could have fear, brave facing and ego in my heart. It's as life is. And it's often better if I talk to another human being or get to a fellowship meeting where I can see what is working for others so I can join in and be a part of again. Freedom to choose life. Life on life's terms, always a unique and authentic path for each person. And in fellowship with one similarity, a desire to be sober today. The Serenity Prayer is where I finish all my videos hopefully to do with recovery without the screeching of the police cars going past on gracious me a typical London night where I live anyway serenity prayer yes I even sleep through all of that during the night often and then get told about it by my neighbours so to God or in good conscience the serenity prayer is as follows God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference for me is just for today.